Man, this is live. Anything can happen. 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 And what if you fuck up? Man, this is live. Anything can happen. I'd be pissed scared I'd get a boner or fucking fart or something. Man, this is live. Anything can happen. Shut the fuck up, man. You're making me nervous. Right, fellas, and away we go. Well, welcome back to the chuck room, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, sorry. Spread. Somebody wants to cut the grass out there in the morning. Can you believe it? Who wants to cut the grass in the morning? I don't understand. Welcome back to the chuck room. I'm going to try to get through this while sneezing all over the microphone or coughing. Let's see if we can do it. Well, we got about 23 people in there. Oh, uh, to put a little pop. I'm going to scoot over a little bit. To put a little pop culture in your morning right there we're gonna talk 1995 i got a little video i'm gonna play talk about some toys for 1995 what a year for toys i mean we saw the release of star wars coming back to the toy house for the first time in about 10 years but who's in the room again super chat support the channel and to make sure i see them and get you a video clip of the day I don't know why I said other day, not other day, just get you a video clip. I'm not muted. Can you believe I started and I wasn't? I'm muted. Junkman in the AM says, Daniel, we got Daniel, we got Rick, we got Darth, we got T for two, one of the best Terminator channels out there on YouTube. Check that out. We got the Monkey Boy is back in here. We got Adam, we got Papa Fett, we got Adam. I said Adam already. We got Brian, we got Rich, we got Dominic is in the house. Can you believe Dominic is in the house? And we got Indiana Smith. <clears throat> and of course, if I don't choke, we got Chris Cadwell is always hanging out. So what do we got here today? Let's just uh, talk about it. Well, I kind of stayed away from news this time because I find a lot of the news so damn boring. Do y'all hear that lawnmower out there? Do y'all hear that guy there cutting the grass while the jump man's trying to do his show? I don't understand. Why would anybody want to do yard work? at 11 o'clock in the morning, especially when the junk man is live on television. He could come in here and sit, and we could do an interview with him. You know, I could ask him his favorite action figures that come with a lawnmower or something. It'd be a lot of fun. Um, but let's just talk toy. I was going to save all the news for Tuesdays, Tuesday night's toy talk. But I thought I'd pull these up and kind of talk about them really quick here. Look at these, guys. The Nazi mutants from... The American Werewolf in London. NECA's going to release these. So if you're a fan of the NECA line of figures, I don't like NECA. I don't care if you don't like them or not. This is for people that do. Um, if you like NECA, great. They do do some good stuff. And, I mean, I'm not going to say they're ones that you want to lay down on the floor and play with. But they always look good sitting up on display. And for the price, anyway. But, American Werewolf in London. I don't even remember this scene. But I haven't seen that movie since the 80s. To be honest with you. And we got one more we're going to look at real quick here. If you're a fan of Star Wars Lego, the game, who isn't? You know, this year we got a new Star Wars Lego game coming out. I don't really buy, play games, new games, but I would really like to play this new Lego game. And some retailers will get a free Lego uh, figure with their game. I'm not sure yet who's going to have it. I'm going to say Walmart, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe even Best Buy or something. But we've got Luke. With blue milk. That's right, an exclusive Luke Lego that will come with the Lego game. Again, it's probably a deluxe edition. Probably some retailer is going to have it, not all retailers. Uh, they're probably going to charge about $30 more so you can get the free Luke. Um, 
But it's pretty cool. I mean, it's got the milk and everything. Oh my God, that's say pretty cool. It's got the milk and everything. It's even got a milk mustache right there. And I, 1995 and I did, was a big year for the Sorry, toy guys. companies. Uh-oh, y'all saw the video early. Oh my God, y'all got teased early there. But that's a look at our Lego. <coughs> Let me mute it, guys. Y'all don't want to. I don't want to hear me coughing and shit on there, but that's a look. Anyway, 1995. What a year, right? Hey, jump that channel popping though. It is a year. What a year! Not shut up out there, man. One time we did a live stream and this guy was out there trying to start his car for the whole whole hour of the show. And then after I did that show, some of you may remember that show. I looked out there and there was a tow truck towing his car away. But anyway, shut up. I'm trying to do my show here, guys. But. 1995, what a year. I was getting into Star Wars, part, I was getting into toys, I mean, 93, it was really the kickoff of the collector's market. 93, 94 is really when the collectors started getting into it, and toy companies were starting to take notice. At least by 95, they were really starting to take notice. I mean, we had McFarlane on the scene doing Todd toys and then McFarlane toys, which was really aimed toy collectors, something you didn't really get in the 80s. Didn't really have toy lines aimed toward collectors. Not adult collectors anyway, not collectors over 13, and based on comic books, some comic books obscure that really only comic book fans knew, Youngblood, a line of action figures based on Youngblood, the comic book from Image. I mean, how many people out there that wasn't inside that comic book realm knew about Youngblood? Not me of them, I don't think at all right there. But... 1995, what a year. And of course, we saw the return of Star Wars. After 10 years away from the Toy Isles, Star Wars is back. And it was bulkier than ever. Mm. Monkey Face Leia. I mean, come on. 1995, Monkey Face Leia. Hard figure to find at the time. That and 3PO was hard to find at the time. 3PO was a little late hitting the stores. Monkey Face Leia was a little late also. So those... But it was a really exciting time because we have all... We, around 93, 94, as collectors... We were really, we need Star Wars again. And there was rumors, Hasbro's got the rights, Hasbro's going to bring it back. Hasbro now on the, you know, Kenner now on the Hasbro's going to bring them back to the store. And then I remember hearing about it in Toy Fair and stuff. That Toy Fair, early 95, maybe late 94, hearing it in Action Figure News. Never hardly saw no pictures of it till right about the time of release. Different time period now, you know, you would have it leaked online. We got Drunk 3PO hanging out the talk 1995. Drunk 3 pill was probably like 10 years old in 1995. He's going to be like, can you talk about the gargle, the gargles? That's probably all he knows about 1995, damn little kids. Um, we got Adam. We got Brooklyn Steve. What did Drunk say? Image was huge. Yes, it was. Image was huge in the 90s. It was, especially this time, Mark. If you were into comics and stuff, it wasn't mainstream. And that's what a lot of us in the 90s liked about Image Comics. I mean, yeah, Dark Horse also was pretty big. You finally had some competition against those big boys, DC and Marvel. Of course, you had some competition before that, but you never really had no real direct competition that really probably took a hurt out of them like Image and Dark Horse did in the 90s. I'm surprised Marvel or DC didn't run in there with a bunch of cash and try to buy them out. Image, and of course, you had Spawn and Youngblood and a couple other figures. Uh, Youngblood... McFarlane didn't do Youngblood figures in the 1996, but another company did do Youngblood figures or smaller line of figures, and we will look at that in a few minutes when we roll the video. Still have my 1995 figures. Love my full Tarkin. Remember that? Try to get a full card. That one's got a full card on it. That one does. I think that's 1996, but I could be wrong because that's a green carded figure. I think that was 1996 green cards hit. I could be wrong off the top of my head. I had Youngblood figures and played with them with my Spawn figures. Drunk 3PO, I'm sure he did. He probably was drunk while he did it. Spawn had a great line of figures, really detailed. Again, probably one of the first toy companies that has really set its sights on marketing to the collector out there, making stuff that a collector would want more than a kid. Most kids didn't want that big old fat clown from Spawn or that big skeleton looking monster, I forget his name, Morpheus or something. But collectors one of those spawn figures uh top cow and chaos was great comic brands too i know I, i'll take your word for that i don't recall top cow off the top of my head but it sounds like a very good comic book series i mean very comic book label i should say 
Uh, I was in the spawn, but everybody was in the spawn. Every, even if you wasn't in the comic book world, if you were into that collecting toy world, even if you didn't really know Spawn, maybe you knew Spawn, the clown, a couple of the other ones, you were buying Spawn figures. I don't care who you were. If you were in 1995 into collecting toys, you at least had a Spawn figure. Even if you didn't read the comics, I think most of us had a Spawn. And I remember that chef pulled of his name. He was like a skeleton looking creature. It's very hard to find. Very hard to find in 1995. So I know I picked it up whenever I saw it. So I could trade it off for something else that I needed. Probably something from the Star Wars collection in 1995. And then you had the clown that came with a, there was variations you had to look for. And then one was packaged with this face and one was packaged with that face. So, McFarlane knew what he was doing. You know, he set up the, the variations. Of course, there was variations long before that. Snaggletooth, red and blue. You got KB exclusive Wolverine around 93. That was just the same Weapon X figure, but just a different color at KB. So, um, Spawn is coming back in a movie this year. Good. That'd be, I hope it's better than that. Never really cared for that live screen. Saw it back in the 90s when it came out. Didn't hate it. Didn't hate it. But it just wasn't, it didn't stick with me. I saw it and I was like, that's okay. But it wasn't what I was hoping for a Spawn movie, you know. Um, that was a lot to live up to for that Spawn movie in the 90s. There. I thought Tarkin would be valuable because it was never before release sticker on it yeah it did have a sticker on it that said never before in any collection it was the first time we got a Tarkin action figure after years of screaming for it but those 90 figures just didn't hold up did they you can go ebay and get most of them for about two dollars now uh some exceptions to the rule i'm sure but most of them you know you might get a boba fett with a round circle or a half circle or crescent circle or whatever it might be a little bit more than two dollars but overall spider um uh, those Star Wars figures, well, a lot of the 90 toys didn't hold the value. Star Trek Playmates, you could get a Deanna Troy for $7 and resell it at the time for $25, $30. Now, you can probably pick it up on eBay for about $2.99. In fact, you probably have to go on eBay and pay the seller to give it to you. I mean, the seller probably pay you to buy it is what I should say. Uh, let's see. See if I've seen anything else. Again, I'm going to just... Jump over this chat. If I miss any, I'm sorry, but I'm going to try to get some uh, drunk 3PO. I'm oh, sorry to see him a super chat. I had it all typed out and everything, and then he cut his stream off. <laughs> you lost $2. <laughs> I'll jump, man. Drunk 3PO lost $2. Uh, spawn. Okay, I read that one right there. Okay, rest of these. What are we up to? 50 people. We are crushing the internet, as the kids say. Um, a little warning to you all. Put it out on Twitter. Do not search. Morps on YouTube. I think it's Mor Morgs. Don't. Mm -mm. There's a YouTuber named Morgs. Me and my son watched a lot of videos of people picking on him. Mm. There's some bad YouTubers out there, ain't they? Not. It's not movie related. Not Phantom Menace related. But there's a really. I was like, and they got like 11 million views. And you're like, how do these people get so many views? And they're just horrible. I'm gonna cough, so I'm gonna mute it. Junk Three Bio says he wants his two dollars. Maybe next time I'll catch you on a live stream. He didn't have his hat. Drunk 3PO didn't have his famous white hat. It just didn't seem right. It was like watching Magnum without his mustache or Indiana Jones without his Fendora. It just didn't seem right. If you know Drunk 3PO, he's got to have that white hat. Okay, we got Mark in here. I thought, oh, I read that one already. Mark, uh, the Violator figure was an odd one. The Bendy. Was it Bendy? That's the one I'm thinking of. It was like a big skeleton looking guy, right? The Violator. Yeah, I think that's the one I was thinking of. He was kind of like a big skeleton looking thing. Yeah, and I remember I had a... God, I wish I remember the I don't remember the name of the spawns. Cause I didn't. I had the, some of the spawn comics. Didn't really get into it that much. But I knew the basics. You know, clown, spawn, uh, angel. Was that one? Remember that hot... I should do a video of the top 10 hottest female action figure. Angel might be in the top two. Surprised people didn't get pissed off with that. She was like in a bikini or something. It was a hot looking figure. It was a hot piece of plastic, wasn't it? Oh, Drunk 3PO sent a message, deleted it, didn't want us to see it. We missed that one. Dominic says YouTube is like public access television. Yeah, better than public access television, I would say, though. And we got Don't Give Him $2, just give him a Deanna Troy. Angela. Angel, that's right, Angela. Okay, you're right, Drunk 3PO, like I said. Dune called wife rant, junk man funny, and said the same thing. Okay, junk man, let's see what we got over here, guys. Let me rest my voice. I'm going to rest my voice a little bit more than usual, so you're going to get stuff like this. You really are wonderful. 
Listen, I am not nice, I am not kind, and I am not wonderful. And being that Junk 3PO is in here, let's send this one out to Junk 3PO. If you go to one of the Junk... <laughs> he, man, he trolls all my friends on his live stream. I remember that guy. I he dresses that. up like Doomcock <laughs> and makes fun of Junk. <laughs> There they are again. They can't believe somebody wants to talk about the junk man while two hotties are on cam. They're like, hey, we're two hotties in a room full of nerds, and they want to talk junk man. But that's it. Everybody wants to talk about the junk man. And there was Junk 3PO. If you don't know, check out his channel. There he was in his white hat. The hot girls. Uh, Drunk 3PO. Wow, I glad got a kick out of that. I didn't want to be like, hey, don't be picking on my girlfriend. Um... So let's see here. We got uh, got some more chests, but let's go ahead and take a look at the toys. What are we? Sixteen. I was going to wait for thirty minutes after, but we're gonna go ahead so I can rest my voice and try to get me. Uh, let's go ahead. I've got everything out of order today because I'm a lazy song bitch. Uh, let's go look at the toys of 1995. 1995 was a big year for the toy companies, from toys based on movies, television show, comic books, and more. One of the biggest planned summer movies was Congo. Although the movie failed to have the impact of its Jurassic Park that it was hoping for, Congo figures didn't sell really that well. By far, one of the biggest toy lines and movies of 1995 had to be Toy Store, about toys of Buzz Lightyear, Woody, and others that come alive. One of the biggest hits led to a huge franchise with sequel after sequel. The toys sold really well in 1985 and continued to be strong sellers throughout the 90s. 1985 also saw the small screen adventures of the Power Rangers move over to the movies along with a whole new action figures of Power Ranger action figures. And the biggest movie line came from a movie released in 1977, 1995. Star Wars was back after about 10 years away from toy aisles, Star Wars was back. This got toy collectors and kids excited all over again. Although they seemed a little bulky, kids and collectors ate them up like candy. Not all movie figures did well. Dragonheart, also released in the summer of 1995, saw little sales. The figures were pretty basic and boring, but here the line really does well with the dragon figures. Although not as loved by fans as the previous Batman movies, Batman Forever was a huge hit in 1995, and so was his toy line. Batman was king of the toys, not only having movie figures, they had television show figures, comic book figures, and more. 1995 also saw a huge increase in the collector toy market. Action figures were no longer for kids. One of the biggest had to be McFarlane's Spawn Action Figure line. These were aimed at collectors, no doubt at all and sold really well, even to some collectors that really didn't even know what Spawn was. They just looked really great on a toy show. The line based on comic books was Young Blood. Although action figures from McFarlane would be released the following year, the first year figure saw smaller Young Blood action figures with a comic. Kenner, by this time under Hasbro, shook things up with his Batman the Animated Series line, rebranding it as The Adventures of Batman and Robin, and still was a huge seller throughout 1995. X-Men was a huge toy line in the 90s, and in 1995, they took us to the future with the toy line X-Men 2099, giving us a slew of impressive figures released by Toy Biz. They also gave us a new series of X-Men X-Force line, bringing some of the characters, collectors, and fans begged for in 1994, where in 1995 we saw the release of some of the ones. 1995 we saw the release of some of those popular figures in the line. Another big series of Marvel action figures was Iron Man, years before his movie debut. Iron Man sold well and gave us some of the figures that collectors have been wanting for years. And you can't release action figures based on a comic book hero without making Spider-Man action figures. And again, we were treated with some characters that we had dreamed about for years, and a whole lot of different Spider-Man action figures. For figures based on television shows, we saw figures based on the animated hit of 1995, Gargoyles, a very impressive action figure line. And not only did Hasbro bulk up the Star Wars action figure line, they also bulked up G.I. Joe with G.I. Joe Extreme. 1995 was also a big year for toys that wasn't action figures. We saw the release of Jibber Jabbers, little dolls that you shake the neck to make annoying sounds. We saw the Dr. Dreadful Drinking Food Lab, 
and Street Sharks became an action figure type puppet that could scare your parents. And also in 1995, after almost 10 years in the market, the original Nintendo was discontinued. But don't worry, Nintendo has something up their sleeve with the release of The Virtual Boy, a failed virtual reality game system that would go on to be one of Nintendo's biggest failures. And that's a look at some of the toys from 1995. What a year, 1995. What a year, right? That was that was some good stuff. Gargoyles is coming back. NECA's bringing, I think it's NECA. I think, how does it make far? I, mean, I think NECA's bringing back Gargoyles. I just saw something about that earlier. Uh, Drunk 3PO said the Max figure. Oh, man, I forgot all about the Max. I didn't even know what the Max was. I think it was on HBO. I didn't know what it was, but I bought it. I loved it like a mohawk. He came with this little white guy that was like just a face and arms and legs. I love that thing. Thank you, 3PO. I forgot all about that. I bought it. I love that figure. Like I said, I didn't even know what it was. I didn't watch the show or the comic, whatever it was based on, but I love that one. So thank you right there. The Worst uh, made me feel old. Had just got ready to feel old. The Worst said that he bought Star Wars toys in 1995 at Kmart when he was eight years old. Oh my God, are they that old? 1995? I thought 1995 was like five years ago. <clears throat> it's crazy. The 90s is 30 years ago now. That is crazy. I still got the Virtual Boy just to play the Wario game. The Wario game. Okay, I will mute it when I cough, guys. The War. I don't think I played tennis. Now I remember when Virtual Boy came out. I was excited, man. I was, I was a Nintendo whore. You know, I had Nintendo. I loved it. I got Super Nintendo. I've had every Nintendo system except for the Switch. I've had them all. I even got Nintendo Wii U. Yeah, I even had that. Didn't have all the handhelds. Had all the had Game Boy the original, but Virtual Boy. Luckily, I didn't buy it. Blockbuster rented it out and went down to Blockbuster, came in a big case, brought it home, set it up, put a little stand on it, and after my eyes started bleeding and everything, I was like, I'm glad I didn't buy this shit, because it was horrible. It was red, it would hurt your eyes looking through it. It was cool looking, and I think that's whoever bought it just bought it because it was cool looking. I'm glad I didn't waste my money in 1995. Now, we looked at Batman Forever. I know it gets a lot of bad rap. Batman Forever, yuck, stupid movie. Jim Carrey is annoying. But the figures did what? That meant they had Target exclusives too. And I didn't have a Target near me at the time. And I even bought when I did. I think uh, Target's about an hour away. I did see a Target. I, I had to buy. I didn't even like the movie. But I was like an exclusive. I had to buy an exclusive. That way I could retire 30 years from 1995. And here I am with my stupid the Riddler target action figure, and I can't get, get rid of it. Barry Hader says, GameCube still rules. GameCube, me and my kids still play GameCube, but at least the last couple of years, they got a baseball game on there we really love, and really good game. Mario Kart, man. Uh, Adam says, 1995 was the last year I got a whole figure line for Christmas. All the Water World figures. Whew, what a way to end your toy collecting. I mean, what a way to end your childhood with action figures from Waterworld. That needs to be in my video series movies. A uh, failed movie toy lines. Um, Drunk 3 Beer says, Of course, 95 brought us Mortal Kombat the movie. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I should have looked at some of the movies. Movie um, Mortal Kombat. Never saw it. Never got into Mortal Kombat. Never really played the game. Never saw the movie. But I remember it. Uh, the worst and the best Nintendo systems are Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Nintendo GameCube. Dude, you forgot all NES. You ha Come on, you have to put NES in at least the top three. It's the original. It's the mother of them all. And it has Super Mario Brothers, probably the best video game ever. The one you can still pick up today and still play. Oh, man. You know, I got that, that mini Nintendo hacked into it, put like 600 games on it, like every Nintendo game on it. And... 99.9 of them suck. I can't play more than two minutes. Oh, we got Ashley in the house. Ashley is in the house. Ashley is in the house. Um, yeah, Nintendo has to be number one. I mean, it just calls the history of it, right? Nintendo has to be number one. Uh, let's see what else we can do here. Yeah. Sorry, Ryan Johnson haters. It's still on, says Star Wars Junk Man. Star Wars Junk Man. Star Wars Punk Ass. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <clears throat> okay, okay. So let's check out some of the chat here. Um, hey, Junkie. Ashley is in the house. I see uh, Chris is hitting on women already this morning. And 
apparently those two people that didn't want to hear her talk about the junk man on junk on drunks stream was uh, two sisters it must be like the sisters of the cantina in the star wars i don't know their name um ron said he's finally made it and everybody's in the house but 1995 wasn't just action figures like i said there was a lot of other toys nintendo ended 1995 but i thought i mean i would have thought nintendo was over way before 1995 just because super nintendo was already out i was surprised if they were still making games in 94 95 for the original Nintendo, I'd be shocked because it seemed like once Super came out, they, all the focus went over there. So I figured when Super came out, they discontinued Nintendo. I didn't realize it stayed until 1995. Uh, Curtis says GameCube still rocks, and it does. Like I said, I still can play that one. We got a Super Chat. Thanks for doing live stream, even though you're sick, junk man. Well, I got to try to grow these live streams. So <laughs> I can't miss them. Once a week. Unless I'm just really, really dead. But we got to give, let's give him Brooklyn. This one's. No, everybody hates Primetime Charlie. This one's for you. Chicken the chick check. You sent a super check. Thank you, dog. It means a lot that you're supporting the channel like that. This is your man, Jinx of Chewbacca. Check your little homie. Thanks to you. There you go. Jinx of Chewbacca. Got to cut him off a little early there. But there's Jinx of Chewbacca giving a shout out to Brooklyn Steve B. For sending in a super chat, supporting the channel like that really means a lot. It does. Uh, Rebought Nintendo 64 last year. Shadows of the Empire played it a few times. That's a good game, Shadows of the Empire. At least it was back then. A lot of times, good games back then aren't good games today. But we'll see. 1995, the movie Friday. Wait, why don't we get an action figure line based on Friday? That sounds like some racist shit right there. We should have action figures based on Friday. Uh, Chris says, says he still plays NES. Like I said, I got that little mini hacked into it, put every game on it. I can play Super Mario. That's about it. I can play maybe Dr. Mario for a few hours. I never got into Zelda. Now, here's the thing. I got into Link. I love Link, Zelda 2. But I never got into the original. And I know everybody else did. And everybody's like, you're crazy. That was better. And I was like, nah, I like Link. Uh, Zelda just confused me because it was an overhead view. But you can see his face, kind of. It was just odd looking. I, was like, I can't figure this out. Oh, yeah. Nintendo Ninja... Nin, I used to think that was called Ninja Garden for a long time. I see it at a store. And I'm like, oh, Ninja Garden? I should do a early show about Nintendo. We could talk about a lot of Nintendo games. Mario 2 was the best. I did like Mario 2. Mario 2 got a lot of... I know we're off topic of 1995. Super Mario 2 got a lot of bad rep because it wasn't a official Mario game, I and mean, it was based on another game, but I really, really did enjoy it, and I did like Lost Levels when they released the original Super Mario 2 over in the U.S. in the All-Star set called Lost Levels. I did, it was hard as fuck, but I did like it. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to cuss there. Hey, Jumpman, just got on. I have some actual work to do today. Work! <sighs> hmm, sorry to hear that, sorry to hear that. We got raw, okay, okay. but, uh, 1995. I'm going to pull up something up here. Toy, uh, uh. Let's just pull up some other toys here. I can see what we can talk about that I had didn't have in the video here. Of course, Toy Story was a big, huge thing. We had a Barbie doll that was a teacher Barbie doll, but who cares about that, right? Who cares about that? For some reason, they released Buzz Lightyear as an American flag. They just got. They were just releasing everything they could. Um, was, maybe y'all know, was the Wildcats action figure line 1995? I'm not sure. It came up, I just searched 1995 toys just to see if there's any I want to talk about that I forgot about. Wildcats, I forgot about. But I don't remember that was 95. Now, sometimes when you type 95, stuff that's not really 95 comes up because the RoboCop figures. And I know they weren't, and I know they were not 1995. What the hell is this? Huh. I'm going to put this over in the file because that's like something I might want to do a video on. So there, I found a video. And oh, we got at Roll Solo sending in a super chat, supporting the channel, making it all worth it right there. Uh, love you, Jumpman. Thanks for being here. Let's give him, I know he's seen all the special, all the special ones. So what do we want to give him here? We're going to give him this one. I don't even like Drake. 
You don't like the Drake. I hate the Drake. I love the Drake. How could you not like the Drake? Who's the Drake? Who's the Drake? The Drake is good. There you go, Raw. Just for you, a video clip. How about that? You get a special clip, and you might have some more special ones coming that's tailor-made just for chats. Shout out to Ashley and Chris, Jumpman, any new Star Wars video, Star Wars figure videos coming? New Star Wars figures. Well, I don't do much new, if you mean new, like new stuff, unless it's retro-related. I usually don't do, I don't touch on the new stuff too much. Uh, so nothing, or if you just mean a video about Star Wars, I'm sure there'll be one this week. I mean, I talk about Star Wars all the damn time, but nothing I can think of. I think today's 5 o'clock video will be how the EU ruined Star Wars. Now, I know Drunk 3PO will get on here. He'll tell you it was Kathleen Kennedy that ruined Star Wars. I'm going to tell you how the EU ruined Star Wars. I think I'll do that video today. I was going to do it Sunday, and then I did I was like, I don't know. I just I went and did that little video because I just I was feeling pretty bad Sunday. But I wanted to get at least one video out over the weekend. Uh, Drunk 3 Bills, how about WWF Wash Wrestling Mania, Mania, the arcade game? I never watched, as I say in the South, a wrestling. I never really got into it. Uh, I watched some of the cartoon that was in the 80s. Um, a lot of my friends were really into it. I, I never could get into it. Uh, but I did like some of the games. I mean, we had one for Super Nintendo or maybe GameCube that I really loved to play. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give y'all a video while I, while I get something to drink. Hmm. Okay, Junk Band, I know you're still watching. Hear it from me to you. Fuck off, okay? You're not welcome here. I'm Audrey See you next time on Kids Beat. That damn Audrey Lee, man. See you next time on Kids Beat. <sighs> I don't know who remembers that. Okay. Oh, I love it. Still play Jaws on the indie. I hated that Jaws game. You like that? I hated that game. <laughs> Maybe because I wasn't any good at it. Uh, but as long as we're talking 95, let's go back here and look at some other toys here. According to my information here, Ghost Rider figures were released in 1995. I do remember those Ghost Rider figures. Forgot all about them. Should have added that as the video. Now look at this. Let me pull this up because this looks like some stupid crap right here. Let's pull this up here. I know. Hold on. Give me one second, guys, while I pull this up. Because this looks like some stupid this looks stupid, so let me pull this up here. Image, new image, add files. I don't know, maybe some of you bought this. Anybody ever had this in 1995? McDonald's Happy Mail Speedsters. Is it just me or do you find Ronald McDonald Fucking annoying. Man, I hate looking at Ronald McDonald. It makes my blood boil. Hate Ronald McDonald. God, I hate Ronald McDonald. Oh, uh, Hulk Hogan got that cheesy TV show in 1995. I don't remember the TV show, but I bet that was bad. Uh, in fact, we'll do this here. So I'm a little... <coughs> I'm a little ahead of schedule here. So I gotta stretch this out here. Let's go here. So let's just do this. I know you can't see them really good, but we'll do. There's, like I said, there's the Ghost Rider figures from 1995. They're the stupid. Oh, hate Ronald McDonald. So let's see what else we got. Of course, you got the Batman Forever right here. Uh, a lot of Batman Forever. Hey, look at there. Ha! You type in Google 1995 toys and you get a link to this video we're watching now. How about that? Got Toy Story, of course. Pogs. Man, Pogs. Who the hell? They were huge. Was that 1995 Pogs? I remember a little comic book store had, and everybody was in the Pogs. At least you're probably eight, ten year old kids. They were really, really in the Pogs. And I think I talked about this in my video X Men X Force. You get Deadpool. One of the first times I remember a Deadpool figure. And probably, like I said earlier, one of the hottest figures, uh, female figures anyway. This one right here. 
Oh, we got another super chat. Super chat. I said super chat. No, super chat. Would be great to make that lady part of the intro for all your videos. It might be, Ashley. Might be. I'm going to send you a... Ashley's seen all the special super ones, so uh, she's always here supporting the channel. So we're going to give you... Hmm... What can we give Ashley? What can we give? Here you go. Well, I can give that one Ashley all the time. This one just because I want to hear it. Funny, but here's that rainy day. Here's <coughs> <rainy> <coughs> oh, sorry. I got the mic with him. <laughs> there you go. 3PO says the EU was pretty cool. Watch my comeback, watch my video today, and find out how the EU ruined Star Wars. At least for me, maybe not for you. Uh, let's see what else we got over here. We got some Polly Pockets. Let's look at this. The most expensive toys of the 90s. Let's just go over here and look. Let's see what the most expensive toys of the 90s. It, I bet there's no Thomas Riker on here. Uh, let's see. Go on now. This better not be a slideshow. I hate a slideshow. Sky Dancers. I bet Ashley played with Sky Dancers as a kid. I mean, who didn't? Who didn't like Sky Dancers? Uh, we've got some Yoko Giga Aka cards. I don't even know what that is. I know I'd pronounced it wrong, and I don't want anyone to talk about it. So, oh my God. Who likes Furby? I would... If I saw this walking down the street, well, if I saw it walking down the street, I'd probably run inside and lock the door. But if I saw a toy of it sitting outside, I would kick it. If that is not a toy, sorry, a book is not a toy. I don't know what this is here, but it looks damn cool. Oh, Beanie Babies. Wait, number six? You mean there's a Beanie Baby that's worth money? Beanie Bitch. More Beanie Babies. More Beanie Babies. Oh, my God. More Beanie Babies. This should be just a list of Beanie Babies. Why well, am I a cosmetologist? No, no. More Beanie Babies. Good Lord. Whoa, the Jurassic Park game. The movie thrilled you. The game will chill you. Extra large game board. 16 official Jurassic Park dinosaur figures. Milton Bradley. I don't remember this game. Is it worth Jurassic was huge when it came out in 93? And the toy made to promote the franchise are worth a fortune. Board game alone is two hundred dollars. That game is two hundred dollars. I am shocked. Who gives a shit about Barbie? Barbie, God, hey, who wrote this? A girl, Polly Pocket. A girl had to write this. What is this? Pencil case playset. That look like some shit Chris would have right there. A pencil case. I ain't gonna lie. If I took that to school, that'd be kind of fun to play with. I ain't gonna lie to you. If they deal with Star Wars like this. I would have took that. I would have bought that in a second, especially if I was in school. Spice Girls camera. Oh, fuck. It makes you hate the 90s, don't it? Oh, Pokemon stuff. Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon. Oh, my God. Pokemon. Baby all gone. That's a white trash looking baby right there. Masters of the Universe dolls. Fucking dolls. And this, this is a picture of one that wasn't even released in the 90s. Remember Master of the Universe dolls? No, I don't remember Master of the Universe dolls. I remember Master of the Universe action figures. But I don't remember Master of the Universe dolls. Or Masters of the Universe action figures. There you go, I remember that. As unsecure bros might call them. Who the fuck wrote this? Insecure boys call them? Well, they're worth a couple of hundred bucks. They wasn't released in the 90s. This whole article is about the 90s, and you got a picture of, the, of one from the 2000s. So don't let your mom throw away. What? Who wrote this crap? Asteroids? Now, that wasn't in the 90s. Well, let me go back up. This said the 90s, right? From the 90s. Who the hell thinks Asteroids for Atari 2600 was released in the fucking 90s? Gremlins? Gremlins 2? The 90s, oh my god. Light Bright. Light Bright's like every year since the 70s. Maybe even the 60s. It from the pit. I don't know what that is. That might be 90. Zelda, mini Nintendo game. That's worth $600? Shit, that's surprising. Nintendo Smurfs. I didn't know these little Nintendo games. What is this? Molly, American. Nobody wants that crap. Ah. <sighs> Garbage Pail Kids. Now what? Now it's 80s too, right? 
they were more 80s than who said asteroids were who why would you put asteroids on a game vintage Atari cards are very in prices but you have a bunch of lying around your basement you might want to round them up and pop them on the ebay games can sell for two no 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 99 percent of any games 99 percent of any games from atari is going to sell for about 99 cent if it sells at all. What is with these people? Good lord, who wrote this? It had to be a female. Oh my god, they're going to call me sexist. They're going to write a hit piece on me. They're going to say I'm part of the Phantom Menace. And they're going to write a hit piece on me. Oh my god, Reed Wright and Ripley. Go after me. I wish somebody would go after me. Write a hit piece on me. That'd be fun. Oh, I need a YouTube beef. J uh, Drunk 3PO, want to have a beef? I need to have a beef with a YouTuber. That'd be fun. We make videos about how we hate each other. Um, I mean, there's a couple of them I don't like, but who wrote this? Fucking two, two women wrote this. Mm. I hope y'all know I'm joking. I don't care if they're women, but come on. Asteroids, a 90s video game. <coughs> oh my God, I'm dying over here. Ugh, shit. I ain't got, I'm not in the mood to be reading about Asteroids. It's a 90s game. This Okay, we got a super chat from Kilton Piana, Piana, Piana. I hope I said that right. I don't know. Y'all, y'all are killing me with the names. OJ Simpson toys were killer of that year. Oh, I see what you did there. You are funny. I'm gonna give you. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I have to do it. You get prime time, Charlie. Sorry. I saw that Junk 3PO. You can delete it all you want, but I saw it. You see Jumpman's wife. Jumpman ain't got no wife no more. Jumpman ain't got toys. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Sporty Spice is where it's at? I don't think that's the one I like. Let me see. Spice Girls. Who the fuck said a damn no? Asteroids. They said He-Man dolls was from the 90s and then got upset. Boys gonna get mad if you call it a doll. It's not a doll. It's an action figure. Dolls are not action figures. Spice Girls. I think I like the one that was married to the soccer player. I don't know if she was sporty or not. But I didn't like any Spice Girls, to be honest with you. Yeah, it was the other one. That was I don't know her name. I don't know what her theme was. <clears throat> was it the OJ trial over in 1993? I don't know. It might have been. But the guy's just telling a joke. Too much wine in the morning, too much wine. I don't wine in the morning. I just get upset when people say toys I grew up on in the 70s were toys released in the 90s. I mean, I can understand if it was 88, 89, and you got a few, and you said it was a 90s toy. I can understand that. But asteroids? Asteroids? Shit, I don't think nobody played asteroids since 1979. Shit, Posh, Posh Spice. That's the Spice Girl for me. Posh Spice. Oh, I remember when everybody had to make it. I like Old Spice. Oh, God. How many people told that hack joke all through the 90s? It's like, okay, we get it. Shit. Raw Solo says he uh, got excited that he saw Primetime Charlie. You're one of the few. People don't like Primetime Charlie. They're like, don't bring that back. Don't bring that. Don't bring that uh, Primetime Charlie back here. YouTubers post the wrong info. No, I do it all the time. I say wrong stuff. I say that was released in 1993, and then somebody will correct me. That was released in 1994. But I don't pull up a video game from the 1970s and say it was released in the 90s. I mean, come on. No, I mean, <laughs> I had, oh, I didn't, you know Junk Man. You know Junk 3 people had too much wine. Yeah, I saw you type Junk Man instead of a Dooncock's wife. That, that lady looks too crazy for me to have a beef with. Mm, Cause I did. I just didn't even say nothing bad to that lady. She just looks too out there for me. Too crazy for me to be messing with. Oh no! Somebody's busted my antenna. <laughs> that was my face when uh 
It's all crazy, gloomy cunt. Okay, I had Nintendo, so I was probably Asteroids in the 90s. Well, you might have been playing it, but you wasn't playing a 2600 cartridge that it showed on the website. And I'm sure you played an updated one. Uh, I had a girlfriend that looked like Ginger at that time. Ginger? From, you had a girlfriend that looked like Ginger from Gilligan's Island? Oh, Ginger's a Spice Girl. I got you. I got you. Was she right here? Was that your girlfriend? Did you put some ginger on your hand? Um, she had red hair. Oh, I guess that's okay for a girl. But you know what they say about boys with red hair. Unless you're Rusty Miller. Rather be red than dead. I'd rather be dead than red on the head. I don't know if that's true. That's what my dad used to always told me. Love me some primetime Charlie. Daniel said he loves primetime Charlie. That's good. I'm glad someone does. But here's Larry sending you a super chat. Well, look at you. Sending a super chat. Just like a first class of wood. I want to thank you a lot for the support. It means a lot. And uh, I just know it goes into making this channel better. And it goes in for helping support the team behind the camera. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, this is going to help the junk man out. But really, it helps out a lot more. It helps out everyone, not just junk man. I mean, there's a lot of people that go behind, on behind the scenes. I mean, of course, you have me, your host. Larry J. Wampa, and you have Alien Todd, you have Primetime Charlie, you have... Yo, dog, wrap right this here. thing up. Hurry up, man. Don't take all day. Yeah. Okay, 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 I'm going. Thank you again for the super chat. He, man, doll. This is why I stay off the web. He, man, doll. Somebody say he, man, with a doll. And then got all upset saying, oh, good boys, don't get mad. He-Man doll, Asteroids, Gremlins 2, 90s. Jesus. Back in the 90s, I used to have a crush. Nev Camel. Who was it Wild Things? Remember that? Remember that Nev Camel and, uh, shit, who was it? Nev Camel and, uh, damn, I forgot her name. You guys, you know who I'm talking about. It's all that at the movie theater. That's how cool I was in the 90s. Larry the Wampa. Not the drugs. Thanks for saving lives. Yeah, I'm going to pull that up just just because you said that. Let me pull that up for you guys. I'm sure y'all seen it. Let me pull that up. Let's see if I got that on here. I will have to add that one. Let me see here. I don't have it on here. Oh, there we go. There you go. Got to get this editing done. I tell you, the junk man messes up a lot. I got to get this action figure show edited and up online. How's it going, Larry? Oh, hey, Alien Todd. You on a deadline? Yeah, I'm on a deadline, you can say. I got to get all this edited up within three hours. Well, I got something to make you get that three-hour work done in about 30 minutes. Is that drugs? Drugs? Nah, man, this ain't drugs. This is angel dust. No, I'm not doing any drugs. Nancy Reagan told me, just say no. Oh man, fuck Nancy Reagan. Like she ain't never got a bump of the dust. No, thank you. I don't need anything like that. Are you sure? It'll make your booty hole hot. Look, no means no. I don't want that. Whatever, that just means more for me. Check it later. I want to vote Geese of Chewbacca about something from you. Fucking Samantha's in the house bringing up Baruch Assault and Julian Hart. Hatfield. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a huge Veruca Salt fan. I love the band Veruca Salt. Samantha is on point right there. I, I've got like three of their albums. Used to tear the first two albums. I used to, man, I used to listen. And this is a guy that grew up on country music in the 80s. In the 90s, I really got into that alternative rock sound. I love Veruca Salt. I'm not going to lie. I'm proud of a Solomon concert. And Julian uh, Hatfield. I had her CD also. Um, Denise Richards, what's the hot girl in wild things you were right about that? But Samantha, thanks for bringing up Veruca Salt and getting a chance to talk about Veruca Salt. And I'm not talking about the small brat from, uh, Willy Wonka. And someone said, uh, Lacey Chadbert. I didn't know, know how to say her name. I know she was in Lost in Space and Party of Five. But there was no one as cool in the 90s as Natalie Portman. Now, I'm not saying in a sexual way because I know she was like 13 in the 90s. But, man. Beautiful Girls, one of my all-time favorite movies. Leon the Professionals, one of my all-time favorite movies. She was in Heat. Uh, Mars Attacks, I love Mars Attacks. I even w ran a Natalie Portman fan website back around 90, 95. In the 90 to about 90, 95 to about 99. 
I was obsessed with Natalie Portman. Not in a sexual way. Get over it. She was just cool as shit. Everybody knows that. Ross has still listened to Veruca Salt. Yeah, I know they came out with a new album about five years ago or something. I never did get it. I never checked it out. Should have. But, uh, but then they broke up. One of the main girl left. Got her a single CD. Jumpman, favorite 90s band. Whew. That's hard. I mean, if I say Nirvana, that's just being heck. Not a band, but I was no more obsessed with Alanis Morissette in the 90s, man. Especially in the mid-90s. That was it. Baruch Assault, Alanis Morissette. I was really into girl bands. I don't know why. I was really into girl girl music. <laughs> I, man, that uh, Jagged Little Pills. Is that 95? Can I talk about that? I would wear that C, I wore that CD out over and over. I had a big stand-up of her. I had a... I have an autograph album cover downstairs, hanging on the wall still. Man. And it's weird, because like I said, I grew up on Buck Owens, and then I grew up on Randy Travis, Dwight Yoakam, and then I heard Nirvana, and it changed my life. Foo Fighters, man. They were some good, was, girls were rocking in the 90s, man. They had garbage, I love garbage. You know, y'all talking music, but I love garbage. I have tickets last year to go see Alanis Morissette and Garbage, and they canceled it because of Cornelius virus. They still didn't give my money back, but they postponed it, but kept my money. So hopefully that will still happen. Cranberries, that's another good one here. Oh, man. Garbage. Yeah, I love garbage. The first album. I think really, that second album I listened to, but that first album was rocking. And laugh at me if you want. I like Jewel. That first album with Jewel was a really good album. Jumpman, do you listen to L7? I don't know who L7 is. Hole, I like that. I like a couple of their albums. Hole has some good stuff. Saw gar I never saw garbage. I saw Veruca saw some Lannis Morissette about twenty times. Oh man, no oh, garbage new album coming. That's good. Check that out here. <coughs> I don't know if we went from toys in '95 to talking rock music of the '90s, but hey, that's how it is. The pop culture in the morning. You never know what you're going to get into. Alice in Chains is a good one. I remember I had a, a CD of Saturday morning cartoons done by 90s rock bands. I mean, it, it was awesome, man. Um, who was that band? Uh, the Blind Lemons did a song uh, from a Schoolhouse Rock. Three, three is a Magic Number. They did that. and I mean, Somebody did Hong Kong Fooey, and it was awesome. They redid the Hong Kong Fooey song. And the rock band, it was, I, I, you can't find that. I've looked on iTunes and stuff. You can't find it streaming. So if you ever see it, it's like rock music from the set, like cartoons from the 70s and 80s, Spider-Man theme, Hong Kong Fooey, Banana Split song, all that was done by rock bands. R.E.M., great, great band right there for sure, R.E.M. And my son goes to the school where they went to school at. My son and my daughter both went to school with two of the members went to school so they're really big being a religious school you think they wouldn't say they still i think they even mentioned the school in one of their songs or the uh mascot of their football team but yeah because they and they lived up in athens which is about an hour hour northwest of me josh is in a super chat supporting the channel way to go josh so no no drug kids if they don't expand your mind then never mind there you go don't do drugs kids don't do drugs. I'm going to send this one out to Josh. Try to find, I need some new video clips. I know it's Monday. I was going to have new ones all ready to go. And then I was like, man, I don't feel good. I don't feel like doing this. Uh, so let's just send an old one out to... Uh, I just want to hear it. Here you go, Josh. Song about Jelly Man Kelly. He loves Jelly the most. I'm a most of all. Jelly Man Kelly loves Jelly on toast. Jelly Man Ooh, Kelly. Whoa. Get this editing done. What the hell? Ooh, gotta get this that out of here. Sorry about that. Jelly Man Kelly. And I'm going to send this one out to Josh also because I just want to see it. And hopefully, it'll trigger some memories of you new guys in the room and say, damn, I remember that. Jason Bateman. We'll be right back with One to Grow On. One to Grow On. Yeah, Drunk 3 Bill says, what up, B-52s? I remember they had a couple of good songs there. I didn't like Rock, Lops, Rock Lobster. Didn't, couldn't ever get into that one, but they had some other ones. Have one about the tin roof rusting. I like that one. Um, 
does junk man have the Cornelius virus? I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. I hope not. Um, Weezer. Remember Weezer? The Buddy Holly song. They had some others. They had some really good songs in the 90s. Weezer, man. President of the United States. President of the United States of America, Peaches. Men's the Peaches, man. I forget. What was that song also? It was like, I think it was in the Dumb and Dumber soundtrack. I think it was Dave Matthews Band. They had some good stuff. He'll pick on Dave Matthews Band, but they had some. The Love Shack. There you go. Yeah, it was one about the Tin Roof. Rested. I remember that. Um, oh, the Shades of the 80s, Saturday mornings. Yeah. I wish I could find that 80s. I used to have that on CD, man. It was like rock bands of the 80s. Weezer's first two albums, that was really... I'll tell you who I like. They only had one song. I think they only had... Well, Sublime was really good, too. They only had, didn't have much. Um, Blind Melon, like I said, one song. Who was... Uh, shit, I can see the album. What about the Dookie album from Green Day? Man, I can't take the 90s without talking that. Um... What, what, oh, we got Star Wars Agent in here. Good morning, Junkman, coming right at the end, but long as he's here. Yeah, maybe we should do a video about the 90s. I want to try LSD and DMT. Good luck with that. Mm. Don't tell Larry. Did I get that one? Yeah. Ramones did Spider Man song. That's cool. I'll have to check that out. Um, there was another one. The Weezer Buddy Holly Happy Days video. That was a great video, wasn't it? Smashing Pumpkins, they had some really good stuff too. Uh, now the all-time bass has to be Weird Al. Man, you have to give it to Weird Al, man. I mean, he did stuff in the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and he was really, you know, most of the singers like Weird Al, you know, they'll have a hit, maybe two, and then you won't hear nothing out from them again. But you had to give it to Weird Al. And I really do love that Star Wars song, the, you know, from The Phantom Menace. I, I'm not going to listen to it like it's a real song and sing along with it. Of course, you got the Yoda song also. And he got, instead of a Peaches, he did Forrest Gump song. Gump. Uh, Arnold, Arnold had a baby in 1995. I did not know. I saw Blind Melon, Soundgarden, and Neil Young together. Man, that would be a cool concert. I never I never really listened to Neil Young until I did my video on George Lucas suing Neil Young. And I was like, I've heard some stuff, but I, on that video I started listening. I was like, man, he's got some good stuff. Smash Mouth. The 90s. I think that might have been late 90s. Maybe. Maybe late 90s. 95 was the year of the PlayStation. Everybody was excited about the PlayStation. Never got into PlayStation because I was a one-track kind of guy. Star Wars toys. Star Wars toys. Nintendo. I played Nintendo. I couldn't believe people was abandoning Nintendo for PlayStation. And I never... My friend had PlayStation. I hated it because we'd go there and you want to play a game and it was loading, loading, loading and it would just piss me off. Oh... Collective Soul, and that's a good one. Um, I have to blame Samantha for digging us into this 90s hole right here. What about that rock band Herman's Head? Oh, wait, that's a TV show. Sorry about that. Uh, sound like a rock band. There was one I was going to bring up. I see, I see it in my head. I can't think of what it was now. Remember the... What was it? It's like Jello something, and then they had to change their name because the Jello company got mad. You know what I'm talking about? What was that? Garbage is based in my hometown. I went to concert here when they filmed one there. Oh, that's awesome. All Spring. All Spring has some really good stuff. And All Spring would do some different stuff. He would do a song, sound a little different here and there. Because Bad is, you know, started all, Green Jelly. Thank you, Samantha. Yeah. I was also about 90 Star Wars toys. 90 Star Wars toys were awesome, although they didn't look that good. They were bulky. I love them. Green Jello. Yeah, they were green jelly, and then they changed their name to green. I mean, they were green jello. <coughs> what song was that? What song was that? That one? That, oh, you remember? Uh, oh, sh the Butthole Surfers. The Butthole Surfers, man. What a name for a band. Yeah, Drunk Three Green Day. That Dookie album was a major man. That was a major '90s soundtrack of your life, wasn't it? Did you ever see the magazine report from Star Wars Generations? Don't think I saw that one. Three Little Pigs, yeah. Three Little Pigs let me in. Three Little Pigs, man, I forgot. And who sung that song? Man, y'all guys are killing me now. We should have done it. We should do a 90s video, man. Um, 
Shit, what was it? Pushing up little days and make them go up. Pushing up little days and make them go up. Go on, make them go pop. It was something about pushing up daisies. Samantha, yeah, that might have looked like they did 10 tons of steroids. Oh, it was great. I love collecting the Star Wars stuff in the 90s. 95 when they came back out. And that's what we're supposed to be talking about. But it's the end of the show. We always run off into other topics by then. Ween. Forgot about Ween. Good one right there. Oh. And uh, who's the, um? She, she had one hit, but she had a lot of good stuff on her album. Joan Osborne. That first that album was awesome. She did a live album too. It was really really good. Wing is Wing the one that sung "Pushing Up Daisies," "Pushing Up Little." Oh, okay, "Pushing Up Little Daisies." Yeah, I remember that band now. That's the only song I can remember though. But I've heard that. I think I've heard them do other stuff. Nineties was a good time. I mean. You had good, I mean, I wasn't in, you had good rap music in the 90s. Good, you know, that early 90s, that gangster rap stuff's got some good iconic stuff. Even country music was coming into, I mean, you had some really good country music. And then you had, well, by the late 90s, you started getting some really awful, by the mid and late country, really got off the rails to all that crap we got today that's called country music. Um, so, but 90s had some really good country Rock was really, really good. Some okay pop stuff, but 90 was like the last golden era for music. Or maybe it's just my age, but man, maybe because I was in my 20s and my 90s. Sony play. Oh, we got a super chat from Chris. Thank you. Sony. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Sony PlayStation had Crash, Crash Bandicoot. That one always looked fun. In front of Nintendo's headquarters, called out Mario. Oh, man, called out Mario. They put Crush Bandicoot in front of the Mario headquarters. That's just that's just asking for it. Okay, Chris, let's send this one out to Chris. What can we see in Chris right here? What can we see in Chris? What can we see? Hmm, not nice. Oh, I did that one. Well, we'll do this one just for the fun of it. I'm going to give you two, Chris. Hey, jump man channel popping though. Ah, dude, I can't wait to see this movie. I know, it's so exciting. Anything could happen. Yeah, anything. As long as they keep it exactly the same as it was in the first three movies and nothing changes at all. I want surprises, but, you know, only the ones I expect. There you go, Chris. Two for you, Chris. Uh, we're all, we got all good music. Soundgarden, Alice in Chains has some really good stuff, too. Wayne did a country parody album, too. <laughs> I'll check that out. Shadows of the Empire. Very good. 90s. Ron said 90s was great, great music, and I could, oh, and movies in the 90s. I was really into the independent films of the 90s. Blockbusters I liked, but 90s for me was about the independent film era, which I miss today, man. I miss the independent movies. Now it's all big blow up, big adventure, but man, I miss, I miss the independent era. That's the movies I really loved in the 90s. Mason says he calls the 90s 10 years drinking big. <laughs> uh, Dar, we got awesome Snake Pliskins. I never. Third. Oh, we. we there was a third Snake Pliskins movie? I know there was Escape from New York and Escape from LA. What's the other one? Darth, you got to help me out with that one. <coughs> clerks. Of course, Clerks, man. Clerks, and I think I'll watch Damn Mall Rats every fucking day, man. When that came. Man, it. I think I watched Mall Rats like every and Chasing Amy is my Empire Strikes Back probably of the Kevin Smith movies, man. Clark's is great. God, yeah. Oh no, he wants one. Darth wants. One. Okay, sorry, Reginald. I would love a in that trilogy. Let's give us a Snake Plissken. I never saw Escape from L.A. Saw New York, but I don't think I ever saw L.A. Somebody told me it was just a bad ripoff remake of. The original wasn't worth watching, so I never did. Chris is chasing Amy. Of course, I got it right over here. You can't see it. An autographed picture, personal autograph poster of Chasing Amy from Kevin Smith. Love that movie. It's one of my all time favorites. <clears throat> okay, we're past an hour. I could watch Clerks all day long. The Clerks I could watch all over and over again. Now, you know, I went back and tried to watch that first Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. <laughs> Sorry about that. It was hard to get through. That stuff with that girl thief and stuff, that was hard to get through. But those first dogma, dogma's watch this go. Kevin Smith says, you know, 
Harvey Weinstein actually owns Dogma because Disney didn't want to be attached to it because they own Miramax. So uh, Harvey Weinstein bought Dogma, and you can't find it streaming or anything because uh, he's tied up with with Harvey Weinstein. So you can't. You won't even probably see it re-released on DVD, man. And I love Dogma. So that's kind of like just lost now, unless you already have a DVD of it, of course. Chris, you drew one major point for bringing up 12 country greats. Ween was in acquired taste. I have to check that out. I'm curious what that sounds like. What was on there? The Mystery Machine part in Jay and Silent Bob was fun. Yeah, I mean, it had some, it had some funny parts. Don't get me wrong. But when I went back and watched it, it didn't hold up like I hoped. The Mystery Machine part with that... The girls jumping around the lasers and went on farts and everything. I don't know. It just didn't. It was a lot of corny stuff in it that it wasn't corny to me back in the day. But watching it again, it was really corny. <coughs> Call Kevin Smith's film lecture fun times. That'd be really good. You had the sniffles junkie. Yeah, the sniffles and a sore throat and a runny nose and a congested head. Oh, Carrie Fisher and Jan Salabobby is good. I give you that one, Drunk 3PO. I will give you that. George Carlin's great in it also. But yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. It's not bad. It's just a lot of corny stuff. That whole girl scene. I know. A drunk man is a sexist. I'm going to write a hit piece on him. He said he didn't like the girls and Jan Salabobby straight back. He only likes the boy characters. But, you know. <coughs> no love for oh, Shell Crow. And I didn't really, I liked some of her hits, and just recently I got some of her music on iTunes and added to my playlist, because I kind of forgot about Sheryl Crow. You're right, she had some good stuff, man. She had some good stuff. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of people we're forgetting about. Hell, I didn't even bring up the hugest, the most popular heavy metal band of all times, Color Me Bad. Color Me Bad. I mean, God. I mean... Heavy metal music. Some of you guys probably didn't lie. I mean, Metallica, Guns N' Roses. But I don't think there was no bigger head, head metal band than Color Me Bad. Mm, they were great. Uh, get better. I'm trying, Ashley. I am trying to get better. Um, let's see what we can get out of here with. I'm going to ignore y'all with this one. Once again, can you see my tears? You know, I was doing, I was reading my comments today. Now get this, I was reading my comments today. You remember when me, we were doing a live stream and I was talking about how Ray Park wrote Ghostbusters, but also played Darth Maul. Someone took me seriously and had to correct me in the comments section. Dogma, Kevin Smith, Catholic Beliefs. It's a really good movie. Anything with Jason Lee in it, especially in the 90s, was good, right? Salt is good for that sore throat. I've been trying that and took some medicine. I always buy medicine. I'll never do shit. Um, metal bands like Fine Young Cannibals. I forgot about Fine Young Cannibals, man. Yeah, what was that song? I remember some song about, she don't like the meat, but she sure like the bone. What was that? Was that Dave Matthews? I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's just stuck in my head. <clears throat> what was the name of the Knight Rider style a show with Hulk Hogan on a boat. Thunderbolt. Man, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Thunderbolt. That sounds like Thunder something. Yeah, Carrie Fisher was great in that movie there. Uh, Groots is Can't Spell. Don't worry, I can't either. Sonic Youth. Good one, good one. Sonic Youth. Set the world on. I was thinking that Kiss song, but I know what you're talking about too. <laughs> Uh, let's see here again. Just make sure I didn't miss any before we get out of here. Black Hole Beck, Chris, thank you, Beck. Can't mention the nineties while bringing bringing up Beck. Um, I miss shopping malls in the nineties. Suncoast record stores, man, yeah. A KB Toys, Radio Shack, the Disney Store, the Warner Brothers stores. We had one in Atlanta in the eighties, but it went away pretty fast. All gone, all sad. Oh, yeah, man. I do I do like the mall. I like a good mall walk around here. When there wasn't 99% girl stores. Every time you go to the mall, now 99% or more girl stores. Oh, my God, there's the junk man again being sexist and saying he don't like girl stores. He doesn't shop at, at Lady Gap. Oh, man. 
Gonna get a hit piece written on me for sure. I just can't stay out of trouble. Thunder and Paradise. That was it. Thunder and Paradise. But that was one mall I would go to every once in a while and it would have a poster store. It had a bunch of posters. I loved it. Roy say Dragon Con. I don't know what he's saying about Dragon Con, but I hope they go back to Dragon Con this year. Radiohead. Drunk 3PO is chiming in with Radiohead. Uh, the Meat Puppets. Man, y'all are killing me here, man. The Meat Puppets here. Hmm. She was on. Uh, and then there was the Night Rider Carper Show. I don't remember that. Thanks for doing the live stream. I enjoy watching the live when I can. Well, thank you for being here. And don't forget, 7 o'clock tonight, the Star Wars live stream, where we talk. <laughs> oh, sorry. Where we talk Star Wars. I know I'm not very professional, as the other YouTuber told me. Ugly Kid Joe. Okay, now y'all are just beginning to get away now. Remember that one, too. But, uh, 7 o'clock tonight, where we announce the winner of the Death Star playset giveaway and more. Star Wars tonight. Star Wars talk, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Let me get out of here, guys. I got a video I got to make for 5 o'clock. Don't forget, the daily video coming up 5, and I think it's going to be how the EU killed Star Wars. Okay. I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Drunk 3PO, Dan, The Worst, Brooklyn, Samantha, Ashley, Rich, Chris, Curtis, Groot, Dan, Roy, Brooklyn, and thank you so much for the Super Chats. It really means a lot. really supports the channel. really helps out. And I'm sure James, Jim, I'm sure there's some I missed. Thank you, guys. really means a lot. Don't forget, 7 o'clock tonight, we'll be back to talk Star Wars. Who doesn't like to talk Star Wars? We'll probably drift off hell talking about rock bands from the 1920s. Who knows? We'll see you tonight. If I don't choke first, at 7 o'clock and 5 o'clock, the daily video will be up. Thank you, guys. means a lot. And we will end it with, what do we want to end the show with? We will end the show with, hmm, we played that. We played everything. We'll end the show with Charles Nelson Rowley. Thank you, guys. Charles, where does the joy come from? And I said, it comes from my blank, and it blanks from my blank. <laughs> huh? All right, fellas, in the way we go. Sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>